All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Friday Mastermind. We do not have Todd Bookspan with us today because he is in flight on the way to the, the Phillies 49er game. Uh, go Niners. Of course, Todd is flying there because he's a uh, go Ooh. Philly. Uh, but big, big game weekend. You know, a lot of great football this weekend. Uh, and because there's so much great football, it looks like Deborah Bird decided to to do a little Halloween impersonation of Deion Sanders. What's up? Yeah, you know, we've got prime time here. I did actually go to Colorado and got to see the game live, which I had never been to Boulder. It was absolutely perfect weather and just gorgeous. I mean, but no, I had eye surgery. That is the real reason why I'm wearing these glasses. And, uh, you know, I don't have my lashes on and it looks like a little bit of a hot mess behind these shades. So, you know, <laughs> I figured I wouldn't scare anybody since it's not Halloween, but um, happy December 1st, too. We have one month left of the year. Uh, I think it's 20 business days, four weeks. So, you know, we've got one chapter left of the year. I'm excited to finish it out strong. And I just want to say thank you to Dave and Mike for both of you, because I couldn't do what I do on social media every day without you guys also sharing your genius and wisdom that helps me echo the research that you guys do and help loan officers be better advisor. So thank you both. Yeah, no, thank you. And Mike, it's good to have you here. I'm looking forward to, I, every time I either watch one of your videos or we had you on a call, I get smarter and, and I get smarter in a way that can be really productive. It can help um, consumers make more confident um, and clear decisions. It can help realtors uh, deliver more value in the sales process. And I think that's super important. So thank you, Mike. Terrific. I, I love it. I, I uh, appreciate being here and um, I, I appreciate people paying attention to the data, you know, that we share. Yeah. So I'm going to frame the call one more thing and then we're going to get after the topic at hand is like the worst behind us. And you guys are going to come away from this conversation with some big macro ideas. We're going to break it down micro and tell you how you can, you know, drill down on this in your local communities. But, but I want to put what time it is into perspective for everyone, because I've done a couple of interviews this week called Separation Season. And I interviewed Jeremy Forcier on it's separation season. Like what top producers that kill it do are different than what average loan officers are, are doing. And, and it starts now, like spring home buying season, if you're a mortgage or real estate professional, starts today. You know, and to put it into perspective, like December is like, the last two minutes of a football game, you know, and by the way, a lot of football games are won and lost in the last two minutes of the game. Uh, and, and then, and then also in order to come out of, you know, to be ready for spring home buying season, you got to meet with a lot of realtors in January and February, and you got to be, you, and, and you need to be helping them get it, their head in the right space to win. And, and guys, it's never been tougher. Interest rates, you know, are still historically high. Although hopefully we've seen the worst, that's going to be part of the topic. Um, but but there's there's massive challenges in the market and real estate agents not only have the macro challenges they have, the local market challenges they have, they have a compensation battle going on. It will be a seismic shift in real estate. So this is not just another year in mortgage and real estate. This is a huge opportunity for loan officers to be leaders um, with data and to help realtors through this pretty wild market. So, so Mike, before we just, I ask you the question is the worst behind us, which I've got to do that just for some people that don't know who you are, or this is the first time hearing you just tell us a quick minute on your role in the industry and kind of what brow you, you think you can bring today. Yeah. So uh, I'm Mike Simonson. I, I am the founder of Altos Research. And what Altos does is we track every home for sale in the country every week, all the pricing, all the changes in the pricing, all the supply and demand, all of that. Uh, and then we bubble up those analytics. We do it into market reports. So, um, you know, LOs and realtors can reach their clients with like, here's what's happening in the market today and every zip code in the country. Uh, and then we do it in things like videos. Like I do a national video every Monday. Uh, here's what's happening in the market. And by watching the whole country every week, you or any if you're watching your zip code every week, it's uh, it really provides insights uh, when the market turns. And it, it being ahead of like most of the 
headlines in real estate come out once a month, then they're for a month previous. And so they're really lagging. Uh, and there's, in fact, some things in the data right now that are starting to uh, shift that are the headlines have not caught yet. And so it's going to be like it's that's why it's really important to watch the data. So we as, as Zeltos, we, uh, you know, our clients are using market reports branded for them to reach their clients. Um, and we do it by tracking every home for sale in the country every week. So, by, by the way, you said you um, do this weekly update. How long have you been doing that weekly video on YouTube? We started doing that weekly video on YouTube at uh, like April of 2020. It was the beginning of the pandemic. And everybody assumed that the housing market was going to crash. And so what I thought I would do at the time was I was like, I'm... I'm going to create a video and just like help people see what's happening in the market. And what happened was the exact opposite of what everybody expected and the market boomed. And there were several months when we're sitting here saying, man, people are buying houses like mad. Uh, but the headlines and the the forecasters and the economists were all like, oh, housing market's going to crash in the next year because of big recession. And so like it was, so we've been doing it. Basically, I've only missed a couple of weeks in almost four years from that, from that time. Uh, um, and, and they, um, and so, yeah, so it's been like nearly four years of doing weekly videos where we're sharing about the whole country. How, how valuable has that strategy been for your success as a business and an entrepreneur, like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like, this has been a game changer and a really essential part of our success as a business. And, a, you know, a one is I've been wasting my time, which I don't think you're going to say that. It's, uh, it's an 11 in I, that I, time. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Yeah. Um, what's remarkable, Dave, is that like I've written about the housing market for, you know, we started, I started the company in 2006 and I've written the analysis and done blog posts. I've talked about it um, for 17 years now. Um, but as soon as I started doing it on video, people like the trust goes up, like the people, the connection goes, it was remarkable. I was like, I, you know, you know, kick myself for not starting the video a decade earlier, but, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, just it meant really powerful. Can Never I just highlight here that uh yeah, that's what I was gonna say is here you have Dave and Mike, and I'm I'm gonna make an assumption here that you guys aren't in the Gen Z or younger millennial demographic. I'm just gonna assume that. But you know, look, you guys are doing it. And I have clients that, you know, on discovery calls, they tell me all the time how they're just scared to show up on video or they don't know where to start or we talk about hosting your show and and having something valuable to say every week. And I think it's a little bit of accountability to make sure that one, you're studying your trade. So you have something valuable to say, which guys, if you're not subscribed to Alto's research on YouTube and mortgage coach and trust engine on you, like I would subscribe, hit the bell so that, you know, part of your consumption time, you can go to your notifications and study those channels first. You guys are doing it. So Mike, I'm curious, was there any hesitation where you like, uh, because I know you call yourself a real estate like data geek or nerd, which I think is really like you bring coolness back to the word. Like, look at you in your leather jacket. It's like you're bringing <laughs> sexy back to the geek. I think I'm allowed to say that since Denise calls herself the mortgage nerd. But how did you get over that? Like, did you just say, you know what? The market needs it. I'm just going to get out. I'm just going to do it. And you just went for it. Or did you struggle at first? Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, I know yeah. that's not. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, it's scary. Um, you know, you don't know if anybody's going to care. Um, right. You don't, and, and you don't, what am I supposed to say? And, and how, how do those things work? What I do with, uh, and one of the things I learned pretty quickly is the biggest thing I do with my videos is I read the data. Like there's always something new. The median price is $384,000 this week. That's down $1,000 from last week. Like I don't have to think about anything. 
uh, like I just read the data. And, and what I do is I take the Altos report up and I look at it and then I look at that inventory number and then I look at the price reductions number. And, and just by doing that, um, suddenly I'm providing that, that real value. And so, you know, I, um, the, the narrative, the story doesn't have to like, it, it it sometimes falls out like it's oh wow that's six weeks in a row that home prices have ticked down that's something to be aware of right like there's a story there's a little bit of a story there um but i just read the day i take my altos report and i i look at it i get it over the weekend and i look at it and i write my my thing out and, and then i record my video on monday mm. oh dave you're Oops, on mute dave, so, so everyone, takeaway number one from this call is valuable content weekly. Uh, realtors need to be more valuable in a way that's obvious to consumers. I mean, every every realtor needs to be able to justify, you know, why why should I use you? And and I I really believe that you know weekly free content is an incredible strategy. Should everybody should that be everybody's strategy? No. But, you know, I interviewed um, um, Jefferson Fisher yesterday, uh, and that interview will be on YouTube any day now. Uh, last year, he started his social media game with less than 100,000 followers, and today he has over 7 million, you know, and he has over 3.4 million on Instagram. And he was an attorney who just, you know, like, I'm an attorney and I want to promote my, you know, my new practice, and he got in the game and... Now, actually, how he delivers these videos and the content he's doing every day, this one minute video on communication is a totally different strategy. But if you ask him, like, what does that meant to your success in your business? You know, on a scale of one to 10, it would have been an 11 plus. So, all right. So first quarter's over. We've set it up. You know, Mike is the worst behind us. Okay. So the worst of the housing recession, two ways to think about like housing market recession, uh, there is home prices and there's transaction volumes. So, um, you know, the consumer cares about are home prices going to fall and have home prices fallen. Uh, we in the industry care about home sales volumes, transaction volume, much more. And so what was interesting was a year ago, we were we're watching mortgage rates climb, we're watching home buyer demand crater. And so the big fear is where home price is gonna fall in 2023. And they fell a little bit. Um, what we didn't really realize at the time was how far home transaction volume was gonna fall and how few sales were gonna fall. And so what we had uh, all year long was um, tight inventory, so we have restricted inventory and restricted demand. We have fewer buyers and fewer sellers. And in the first half of the year, when mortgage rates fell a little bit uh, from this time last year, we saw demand pick up. Uh, we saw demand pick up faster than supply. We saw inventory fall, but it was but sales were still restricted because of the supply. So we hit. A, there were more buyers than sellers, and so. Um, so we, we we still had a restricted supply. Uh, and so transaction volumes, much of the year were 20, 30, 40% fewer than the year prior. Uh, so if we think about the worst of us, the worst was like, that was the worst of it. 30% um, fewer home sales. And if you look at like the NAR numbers, the pending home sales, the seasonally adjusted numbers is 6 million home sales a year to 4 million. And right now the headlines are under 4 million a year, right? That's a third fewer sale. That's a huge. So what we're doing at Altos is we track every home for sale in the country. And if you watch the housing data recently, you know that in November, inventory rose in November as mortgage rates rose, like in October, September and October, inventory rose very late into November. That's super unusual. Normally inventory nationally peaks uh, at the end of August or maybe early September. And so inventory rose all the way into November this year. So that was really unusual and and like slowing demand because mortgage rates spiked over 
you could see it. Um, then, uh, then um, the so you so if you've been paying attention, you know that that inventory has been climbing. Uh, we're finally at a point where new listings are slightly more each week than last year. So new listings are up. Um, so those could be interpreted as like bearish signals, right? Supplies climbing and weak demand. But what you might not know is that transaction volume has ticked up and is now like 5% higher than last year at this time. If we're looking at the week that, and when I say transaction volume, I'm talking about new pending sales, new contracts each week. And so these are not sales that have closed yet. They'll close in December and January, but like they, so these were 30% fewer all year long and they finally eking back so that we're showing an expansionary market in terms of number of home sales. So in that sense, like the worst seems to be behind us um, because we can, we're finally in a mode. And I think it was like even maybe Tuesday of this week, the, the, uh, October pending home sales numbers came out and it was record few or fewest since when I like the, you know, the, the worst of the, the housing, the, the bubble burst. And so the headlines are still going to be really low for several months, but the key is that it looks like the early signals are that we starting to get, um, growth over last year's sales. So that's a signal that I'm really like, it's really early and nobody's talking about it yet. So, so Mike, um, you know, typically um, this time of year, regardless of market conditions, it's cooling off, you know, like, like the, from a seasonally adjusted standpoint, like, you know, Q4 is that. And the fact that we're having growth, is it almost like, hey, it's a positive trend and it's an even more positive trend because usually this time of year, um, things would be tapering off, or are you giving us seasonally adjusted numbers? Yeah, what I'm, I'm talking about is comparing to last year at this time. Okay, so, so it's a seasonally adjusted number. It's a, yeah. yeah, in that sense, it's seasonally adjusted in that in that it's five percent more than mid November okay. last I, year. Yeah, and, it, and you know, sales are tip dipping. It's Thanksgiving week this week, like you know, the after right after Thanksgiving week. So this down, we'll have a you know, uh, Christmas New Year's week that'll be down, and then and then we start. Uh, you know, resuming in January. Uh, so that's last normal. year's last year's November. Wasn't that also an unusual uptick comparatively speaking to the previous years or am I mistaken? In uh, So last year in, uh, in the fall rates rose in September and October last year mm -hmm. um, and, and demand slowed. And so uh, transaction volume started going, but also inventory sellers were holding back. Um, and so that's where we got supply constrained. Uh, and, and so it's not just a demand side of the equation. It's a supply, su supply side. And, and, you know, I know a bunch of LOs and, and realtors who say I've got buyers. They like, they're looking, but there's, there really is no selection. Um, so what we're seeing now is a little more like buyers are starting to, um, ease back in and therefore transaction volume can has a little more room to grow in the in the first part of the year and um it's really there's a there's sort of a rule of thumb that i've been trying to communicate to people which is uh consumers are more sensitive to changes in rates than to the absolute levels and so you know we saw in um September this year, rates went from like six and a half to over eight in a few weeks, right? big moves, right? And that hit the brakes. And then all of a sudden inventory is climbing into November. Uh, and so that was a reaction to the change in rates. But what that means for next year is that if rates, even if they stay stable in the sevens, that means that, that, uh, consumers are more used to that and that by itself is bullish for like more transactions because people will go okay i understand but if i'm shopping at seven and all of a sudden rates are 8.1 that's when i slow down and so it's that change in rates that people care about and on the other side 
if rates fall from, you know, the their low sevens right now as we're recording that too, you know, in the sixes, the low sixes, like that's going to open up a ton of demand. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't know if this is just some salespeople making up some cool numbers uh, or whether there's really data to back it up. But two, two things I've seen on social media lately is that for every eight or every point in rates coming down, there that's five percent in appreciation you know so i don't know if that's actually a data point that's been cited out there and then i heard another data point that was pretty cool i don't know exactly what the source is that for every point rates go down there's five million more um potential buyers avail you know um that qualify to to buy do you, are, are those just you know salespeople making up data points to uh, sound good or is that we I don't I don't have a uh, specific confirmation on those numbers. Uh, but I can tell you that one of the things that people ask me, right, is is like um first everybody's like, what's gonna happen to inventory? Are we gonna get some inventory in, in the next year? And then the other, there's like a corollary question to that, which is uh, is there a scenario where if rates fall, suddenly uh there's gonna be a bunch of sellers and we're going to have a flood of homes and therefore prices are going to crash. Is that a scenario that we should be worried about? Uh, but, but the, the, here's what the data does say, uh, which is um, rising rates generally is going to lead to more inventory on the market. Falling rates is going to lead to less inventory on the market. Um, and that is because when rates fall, demand is is spurred more than supply. So as so that's your you know five million borrowers. I don't know how many borrowers it it makes more affordable, but but what we can see is when rates fall, demand is spurred uh, more than supply. So inventory falls. And then on the other side, when rates rise, now we have things like. Um, I am more likely to sell the first house to finance the second house. And so now I have, I resell my first one and inventory rises when I, when, when, when rates are rising uh, a few, fewer of the investment deals pencil out. So some of those come on the market. So what happens is as a rule of thumb, there are buyers out there who are like, I'm just going to wait till rates fall next year. And then I'm going to jump in and get my bargains. But what they don't realize is that uh, while rates are going to fall, is going to make it more affordable for you. It makes it more affordable for everyone and your competition rises and your selection is going to fall. So keep that in mind. Rates falling means less selection for buyers next year. Rates rising would mean more selection. Yeah. And more competition, you know? And- yeah. Yeah, and so so awesome, uh, Deb. Any question? By, by the way, Mike, do you have any slides or kind of data to share with us? You, you know, I could show some slides. I mentioned about how um, home, like home sale, like a uh, transaction volume is ticking up year over year, and I can show what that means, and I can show inventory, the inventory trends. If you want to do a quick look at those, yeah. Well, two things I'd like to do before we run out of time, but we, you know, we got a lot of time, so. Deborah, I'm going to throw it to you for a question, but I would love to, one, get a few slides that support some of these topics that loan officers could use, you know, in meetings with realtors. Also, you know, I know you guys have a platform that, uh, you know, helps them localize, you know, these trends. And I want to make sure that, you know, we have time for you to tell everybody about that. But Deborah, any questions before we just kind of pull out some slides and, you know, well, two, do some data two nerdy things. stuff? I had I had done a an Instagram poll on my story. So for for those of you, you guys should use those. It helps get data and and ask questions that would be meaningful to your audience. So a lot of people responded and asked. They wanted to know what was going to happen with home prices. And these are majority probably real estate agents and loan officers. But the burning question that they keep getting asked is, you know, everyone wants to try to time the market. And I think you just kind of answered that with what could happen. And I know you don't predict interest rates, but if rates do come down, then we will see fewer selection, which could drive, you know, the competition and price up. But so number one was home prices and how to handle that conversation. And then to the 
the whole thing with it being an election year, like any historical data on, you know, that other factor that just yeah. makes this a crazy time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can. So home prices, what's going to happen to home prices is uh, it's a great question. So let's let's um, here's what we can tell. Uh, we know that um, we know that demand is low. We have a affordability problem, right? So we're not, there, there's not a huge surge of demand to push prices higher, but we also know that consumers are, are sensitive, right? If, if rates happen to fall, that's going to free up uh, buyers and that will push prices higher. As of right now, there is no, a lot of consumers are worried about prices crashing, uh, home prices crashing. It's, and, and the hypothesis, like the assumption is, hey, home prices went like this. It's unaffordable. Therefore, they must come back down, right? Like, right? That's the that's the assumption that a lot of consumers make. And um, and so the 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 way I answer it is that there's no signal in the data now uh, that shows it shows prices correcting down at, at all. Um, the, the, and so we look at things like, you know, the percentage of homes that are on the market that take price reductions and, you know, normally about a third of homes take a price cut before they sell, uh, when the market's cool, that's 35, 40%. Last fall, it was, you know, in Austin, it was 62% of homes took price cut. And you could therefore say Austin's home prices are going to, sales prices are falling because 62% of the homes on the market have had to take a price cut. Like that was really clear. It's a leading indicator of future sales prices. So price reductions right now is like 38%. It's a little high demand is slow, but uh, it's ticking down for the year. And so um, it's not, it's not skyrocketing. It's less than it was last year, fewer home, fewer price reductions than last year at this time. So those as a leading indicator um, is, not strong, but but not not weak, right? There's there's nothing weak in that data. Uh, we can look at the supply and demand, and if supply climbs and demand falls, that'd be a scenario where home prices would fall next year. Um, supply is very low, even though it's inching up and will give us more transactions. It's not skyrocketing. It rose much faster last year, uh, and so. Um, so there's no signal in the supply demand ratio that says that home prices will fall next year. Um, and so that says to me that next year will be another year of like, we've got buyers, it's unaffordable. It's like, they got a stretch to make the purchases. Like that scenario seems to be in the, uh, it, we're set up for the same scenario again. If a big recession hits, a big job loss recession and we people start like we everybody's employed right now we have record levels of employment maybe it's just it's softening a little bit in the the monthly data now uh but let's say um big recession hits and um we lose a bunch of jobs um there will be that'll obviously uh weaken demand for homes and would you know you could imagine um a slight downward pressure but you won't see distressed inventory uh like seller i've been out of work for three months and i can't find a job and, and i need to sell my house that inventory is really 2025 inventory um before that like assuming that the that the jobs we start getting a huge spike in jobs losing jobs in in q1 so like that's that's really like another year out in the future. So 2024, the signals for 2024 is um is there's there's nothing in the data that shows big price reductions. Uh there's nothing in the data. There's obviously nothing going to push prices super high, but if mortgage rates fall dramatically, if the spreads compress and the the 10 year comes down, then that could push you could, I could easily see a five or six or seven percent, maybe not seven, but but like you know, a five percent home price gain year, um, in in the the lucky scenario, lucky for you know those of us who are uh, who already have financed our homes. 
so that's how that's how I look at that um, that uh, at home prices. Like, there's nothing in the data that shows home prices crashing. Uh, so again, for your buyers sitting on the fence, who are like, I'm just going to wait. I think home prices are going to crash. <laughs> I'm just going to wait and then swoop in for the bargain. Like, how long are you going to wait for that? Right. There's nothing yeah. in the data says there. And oh, by the way, if we have a big recession, what's going to happen to your down payment in the big recession? What's happens to your job? You know, when you are you going to be able to swoop in and do that? So that's the timing the market question. Yeah, is is always super tough. Yeah, data just doesn't support it. So so guys, I want to make sure, you know, just as a reminder, you know, he's got a, a lot of free content and free resources and you know, for everyone watching this in Zoom, you know, we put a link, but, you know, most of the audience is watching this in YouTube. So down below in the show notes, there's a link to amazing content. Uh, you're also, you know, very active on on X and, you know, social media for value. And and then we put a link, you know, so that you can learn more about how to how to really win with with realtors, how to how to create more value for agents. Um, you know, you can click here and get a demo, but I, I just can't emphasize enough that um, being a loan officer is not where it's at. You know, if you want to win going forward in the mortgage space, you need to be a data-driven mortgage advisor and and realtors need you. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what you're hearing because, you know, you support the real estate industry and you know a lot, you know, of very smart people. Uh, you're part of Housing Wire, you know, like who's more connected than you guys at at this news of of real estate commissions and the future of how buyers agents are compensated and what that's going to mean. Let's. I just love to hear your your thoughts on that, and then maybe we can even talk about how being a data driven mortgage advisor actually is a really smart thing to do right now. You know what do you what do you what do you think is going to happen, Mike? And when? Like, is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? When do you think? it will be actualized in the market. You mean the big, the, the big lawsuit stuff? Yeah. Buyer's agents. Yeah. In lawsuits. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's uh, obviously seismic, like, uh, but also it seems like it has a, a long way to go before we actually have direct impact. I thought it was very interesting to watch like how the, the, um, the publicly traded the stock market uh, uh, for the real estate companies took a big tank on that on the day of the announcement. And then three days later, rates dipped and those stocks shot back up. It's like those companies were much more sensitive to mortgage rates than to the than to the lawsuit uh, scenario. I think, you know, I can imagine a world over the next several years where we have fewer buyers agents or the cost shift. Um, you know, you can't yet put your buyer's agent commission in your mortgage, but I could imagine a world where suddenly that regulation changes. And so to the, it's another thing that gets rolled into that mortgage. I, um, I could imagine maybe that kind of change happens, but I, but I do think that we are under, uh, that, that the agent's commission is under pressure uh, and will continue to be under pressure, and therefore it probably it weeds out the the ones who are, you know, doing very few transactions. It concentrates into people who are doing more transactions, doing it really professionally, doing and and in some ways that's probably a good thing. Uh, that that uh, you know that those are the people who best serve their clients, um, and and uh, you know so. But at the end of the day, it's it's still like it's a value game to the end, to the end uh, buyer and seller. And my uh, it's funny the my the CTO for Altos Research, Andy, um, recently he and his wife recently moved back from San Francisco to England to take care of his in laws, um, and they are buying a house in the UK right now. And, and the commissions are lower. There's no buyer's agents in the UK. And they're in this process where they found a structural flaw. They're in contract and they found a structural flaw and they have no idea what to do. They have nobody on their, in their court, right? They have no, like what, 
Like, how do you solve it? And there are ways to solve it. He just said, doesn't know what they are, right? You know, they, they, and he doesn't have anybody who does know what they has to go find somebody. And so it's a really fascinating trend. And it's like, yes, they pay less for their, their commissions, but yes, they get less service for that. And so, um, I found over time, you know, we have discount brokers in the U S and you can always find a cheaper, you can always find a, a cheaper agent. Um, however, you look at the trend of those discount brokers, I'm a longtime Silicon Valley guy. And so, you know, zip realty in 1997, do an internet, uh, discount real estate, you know, like it's been the same story for 26, seven years. Um, and what we find is that consumers in America continually demand the full service, right? They demand uh, Redfin launched as a discounter and they, uh, you know, a year later, they're like, oh, here, we have a full service offering now too. You can pay full, full price there because consumers want the service. So it'll be really fascinating. I can imagine it's a world where, you know, who's cutting the check has to shift. I can imagine... Uh, you know, there's a, a world of, uh, you know, where the fees get placed has to shift. Um, and I can imagine a world where we have fewer, uh, you know, uh, maybe significantly fewer agents uh, out there because the, 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 the pie has been squeezed. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no doubt. I, um, I interviewed Tom Sherman a couple of days ago and it'll be on our channel any day now. And Tom is a, top producer in the Dallas market. Uh, he, he, he had previously done over 200 in volume and he was kind of like, I'm like, how are you doing? And he was kind of apologizing for his volume. And I thought he was going to say like 50 million or something like something, you know, but he's going to do 130 million this year. So, I mean, you know, he's the number two producer at benchmark mortgage behind the, the one and only, uh, twin sister of Deborah here, uh, Denise Donahue, the mortgage nerd. Uh, but I bring this up because when I asked him, you know, it's separation season, what are you doing? He said, I'm, you know, what I'm having conversations with realtors and we're having this conversation around how do you justify your value? Like he's stepping into that conversation with agents and then, and then he's asking himself, because he's a mortgage coach, he's done thousands of mortgage coaches, he knows how to use data to give confidence and clarity to consumers. And he's like, how can I, as a mortgage coach, um, make buyer's agent's service more valuable? Like, how can you do that? So I think everyone listening to this, that's a question that needs answers. And that's a question that needs execution. And so that's going to throw this question to you, Mike. Someone who uses your data, like they follow you, they're smart. You know, they invest that 10 minutes a week, you know, or 15 minutes a week to like really get smart with you. And then they subscribe to your services and they have local data. How, how does that make them more valuable agents? And how does that make them? Cause you also said, um, you know, what was the term you used? It's a value game for buyers and sellers, you know, and and how can they be more valuable to buyers and sellers also? So any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, you know, the using the data weekly. Oh, hey, I know you uh, you are interested in buying a home in next year. And I know that you have a hypothesis that that uh, home prices are going to crash. Um, you may be right. What I like to do is make sure my clients, my buyers and sellers have, have the data in their inbox every Monday. I'm going to put this report in your inbox every Monday. And I just want you to look at one number. Watch this number every week. And, and so now, you know, they go and they're like, okay, it's April. And I've been getting Deborah's market report every week. Like Deborah's my is my my person, like that's where I go. Um, and so you know, they there are there's all the people in the pipeline. And it's likewise, you know, as as LOs we're working with agents, the agents are hitting the same, they're getting the same questions, they're developing the same um, you know, they're they're dealing with the same objections 
and and so the data helps them in that sense, right? It is it is like, hey, I'm going to put this in your inbox every Monday, and here's what we are, here's what I want you to pay attention to, and that way you don't have to tell them. It's not about like, here's what's going to happen in the market. It's like you have a hypothesis of what you think is going to happen. I'm going to put the data in your inbox, and I, let's let's watch this one number to see if it's happening. What that. I, is it putting you on the spot? Can you show us what one of those looks like? I mean, is that certain? Yeah, 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 for sure. Screen? Yeah. I just want to get a visual for everyone. You know, what would it be like to add this kind of value and then to be yep. able to deliver this with local data in a local market? So, yeah, this is the this is the Altos uh, platform. We have uh, this is my account. So I've got thousands of of reports for all over the country, but I can see how many people are opening each of my reports and I can click through and see which of my clients is opening them. Uh, I have my contact database and my email campaign. So my active buyers are getting one set of, of reports. My agents are getting another email drip from me. And so I know my agent works in this in Fort Worth and they get the Fort Worth. And I know this agent works in Plano and they give, I give them the Plano report. Um, and then here's what a report looks like. Uh, this one is for for the whole Sacramento metro region uh, that I just happen to have up. Uh, and when I mentioned we were doing the video and I just read the data, like you can do this at any zip code level or you can do it at the metro level or, or you know, I do it in mine at the national level. But it's, it's like what we do in the Altos reports is like, here's this week's data. Uh, median price in Sacramento is $675,000 right now. We can see that that's, of course, less than it was in the summer, but it's actually not falling right now. It's actually ticked up in the last few weeks. We can see that that in you know, days on market is climbing for the fall, but that's normal, and it's not super high. Uh, we can look at inventory numbers. Inventory in Sacramento is 2,800 homes on the market in Sacramento, uh, it is has uh, peaked in October and is ticking down. So if you're worried about inventory climbing, you can see that in Sacramento, inventory has already peaked and is starting to tick down. Um, and so like I can literally go right through this or if I'm even so what we'll do is email this to to your clients. And this is, you know, branded for Deborah, Deborah's market report, the mortgage nerd market report uh, going out. You you. um you can then say, you know, are you a big geek or a little geek? Because if you're a big geek, you're going to dive into the data. You're going to go like, oh, I want to see what five years of uh, prices have done in Sacramento. I want to do or want to look at inventory or or I hear about I hear price reductions are climbing. Are there a lot of price reductions in Sacramento? Well, let's look, you know, over time, 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent is normal in Sacramento. During the pandemic, it was almost none. And now look, we're right in the normal range of price reductions in Sacramento. So like if you're a big geek, you're going to dive into your into Deborah's market report and and see all the things going on. But if you're a little geek, I just want you to look at one number, right? You are saying you're thinking inventory is going to climb this year. Here's our inventory number. You look in this and you watch this number every week and you're going to know exactly what's happening with inventory. We do things down in um, price range quartiles too. So the high end of the market may be behaving differently from the low end. In Sacramento, the high end is a million three. The low end is 400K. And look at this, days on market, 70 versus 28. Like If you think you're going in in Sacramento and you've got a $500,000 price point and you think you're not going to have to compete right now because the market's mm -hmm. slow, like... I can tell you exactly what's going on in your price point. So that's really what you want to do. And so this comes out every week for every zip code in the country. And as a as a an LO or a realtor, you don't have to you don't have to know every zip code. Like you're putting it in their inbox and you tell them to do it. The other thing you get to do is when you call them, when you're on the phone with them, you can work the data right into your script. So you may not know this, but you know, days on market in your price range is 28 days. That means, uh, you know, even if 
prices, if, if mortgage rates fall next year, it's going to get more affordable to you. But look, it's it's already only 28 days. So that means that demand is going to be really heating up in your price range. So use that in your thinking. So now like this is right in your, in your, uh, into your script and you don't even have to know it. You just go scroll down and you're like, uh, it's 28 days. Right. And, and so you can work that, like you just bring the report up for, you can go sit, search, you grab a different zip code. By the way, when you put this report in their hands, and they forward it to their brother or their cousin, there's a, a lead conversion that pops up. And so that person ends up in your in your lead database oh. so that they then get the report. Now they're getting Deborah's report every week. And you can see who's opening it. So that's how the data works. And when I do my videos, like I'm literally, I write a little paragraph on list price. I write a little paragraph on inventory. I usually talk about price reductions. You know, and and we can see all of those, like they're right there in their latest data. I can see where they change each week. So that's what I do with it. Mike, real quick, so, what's the difference between average days on market and median days on market? So um, uh, the, the average works where uh, it's taken all of them. And what happens is when there's uh, stuff that's been sitting around for a long time, the average skews higher. And the median mm -hmm. is the middle. So the median is much more the much okay. more likely part of the market here. So 42 days is sort of normal. Um, but okay. there's some stuff in Sacramento, especially the ex super expensive stuff that pulls that average higher. It's why we use median when we talk about list price so that there's not like one $10 million property that that makes the whole thing okay. look like 5 million bucks. Um, it is. it is That's why we use that median one. So I actually, so the, most of the, the time I talk about on market median. At the at the bottom with the segments that aligns with the median days on market. That's right. The DOM. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's what I, and that's usually the one I focus on because of that skew. Like there's always some long-term ones. This one feels like more what the year, what, what you're looking at here is if I walk into the market today, this is the homes that are on the market. This is where they are priced. This is how long they sit around. Um, a lot of times real estate data, the headlines or the stuff that comes out of the MLS or whatever is uh, sales that happened last month. Mm -hmm. And like, who cares about that? <laughs> right? Like you, you want to know about that with like, when you're doing a valuation on a given property, where did they transact at? But what I want to know is how's the market? Like, do I have a lot of competition? Is it going to get easier? Do I have to make an offer quickly? That's what I want to know. And so that's why we study the active market with the Altos data and the traditional data, you know, that looks at closed sales from, you know, October and it's now December. Like, you know, who who cares uh, about what was happening there? Because October was super different. October was when rates were were jumping over 8%. And, and so October was like the worst, right? The last of the worst part. And so now we can start to see things changing. And for example, you know, if you look at the inventory data in October in Sacramento, inventory was climbing. And so the traditional headlines and the stuff that your clients are probably seeing is October headlines. Mm -hmm. And right now they're seeing, oh, inventory is climbing. Sales are worst ever. Like they're seeing all that stuff. But what they had there, but they're, you know, six weeks of improving market since then. And they don't have that yet. Yeah. Mainstream media is always, always, you know, a minimum of two weeks and more often a month, you know, four to six a month weeks or K Schiller could be three months behind. Yeah. Yeah. No, it depends on the, which is, you know, the biggest mainstream media index. And again, it's a great yeah. index. It's a great data point. It's just, you know, Guys, you want to be a local data-driven mortgage advisor. You need to have the data and you need to be local. Yep. And I, I just think this is a super essential weapon for modern mortgage professionals. What what does it cost for a loan officer? And, you know, real quick, I know this isn't a demo, but. Yeah, and so um, it's uh, it starts at 79 bucks a month. Uh, a lot of people do the 149. They get some more features. They they get to dive into the advanced analytics Um uh, where you can go do queries and build charts and you go, oh, you're looking at these four towns? Like, let's go look at these four towns, compare them together or, you know, 
somebody was asking me about, you know, like here's Dallas. Dallas inventory is rising this year, but I did it. Uh, I did a chart 2023 and pre pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so here's what's interesting. We talked about like, uh, looks like next year, Dallas inventory is going to get maybe back to more normal levels, finally, of inventory, which also means probably more transactions, right? Because there's more selection for buyers like that, I think is is bullish, but it's not skyrocketing, right? So there's not like a surge of, of inventory, which says prices are going to tick down. And so I just built this. So that's our that's our pro our premium level offering. And then and then if you're running a team or a uh, you know a small office, then we have multiple user accounts and those kind of you can do those, you know, at uh three, four hundred bucks a month, that kind of thing. All right. Well guys, we've given you the link. I can't rec I mean I can't recommend this enough. And Deborah, you're running the largest social media you know, platform of loan officers and lenders. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Isn't this? Well, that's, a that's what I was, and, and I was Have, have say. you seen it the way I just saw it? Like, you know? Oh, oh, I get, I got our local title company to get on this and I get emails from them every single week and it's my go-to source. And it's really what I've been pressing upon all loan officers and real estate agents is from a market standpoint, like the market should always drive your marketing. And unfortunately, you know, it's kind of like what you said, the, the default these days is distrust. And so as much as there's a lot of talking head videos out there, it always is more, you have more credibility when you can use the data because the data just validifies your words. Because I've never met a loan officer or real estate agent ever once tell me now is not a good time to buy. And so it they make it really easy on all the platforms right now. And we, we see Mondays as market updates. And right now we're having to go a little bit broader when I'm working with loan officers that real estate and housing is a little bit broader of just search and interest volume than say mortgage. So if you're wanting to get more reach and more visibility, you may need some of your content pillars to be a little bit broader. And so Mondays have been positioned as the housing market updates, but you know, the first Monday of the week may be national, which I subscribe and I watch every single Monday video that Mike produces. And he also has a great podcast too, where he has great interviews that I will sometimes get data from. But then the second Monday needs to be hyper local because I do think that, you know, there are markets that um, you know, debunk some of the things that we hear from mainstream of just overall, you know, like Austin. Um, I think Phoenix is another one spots in Utah. And so, you know, how are you showing up as the vessel online as the media source, which is something that Dan Keller had shared is something that he started just the beginning of this year that he wants to be the media source. But what is it backed by? It can't just be skimming headlines like you need to be the, the data geek. And that's what I love about those who care enough to create content is it comes down to then accountability but it's knowing the data and then knowing how to deliver the data. And there's something called the green screen effect that all the platforms, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, you could screenshot what Mike just showed us. And it's within the app. You go to Instagram, you go to reels, you go to effects and you hit green screen and it'll pull up that report right behind you. So you look like the weatherman, no fancy equipment. You don't need a green screen. Like this is how we do the TCA Tuesdays and now the market update. Mondays as just our content themed pillars that has to be done consistently over time to like Mike said position you as the expert of like you've been in their inbox you've been on their social media and it's not just a talking head of lip service it's like it's backed by data that's live data every week not these screenshots of other platforms that I see used over and over and over that's great for like monthly but it's usually a month old and so if you are someone that's trying to make the best decision and you need clarity and confidence, you can't go off of data that's three months old. Like you want to be, you you know, so use this. There's no, there's no excuse. We have Mike and Dave that are not millennials, nor Gen Z's that are on social and they're doing video and they're using data, like allow them to be the example. And just now you have the courage, be brave. We're rooting for you and just show up on Mondays and do your own weather report of the market so that your agents can then even share that. And you're almost educating your community and your agents along with you, but it's got to be based off the live weekly data. Otherwise you'll have nothing to talk about.
Yeah, and if you want, so I'm sure we put links in the in the the chat and the the description and stuff. But uh, you can book a free console with our team. You can talk about your local market. You can talk about how you build it into your process, and and actually, uh, so so I recommend just click through and and book book a time with our team, and we can go show you how you, this is how we show it up, and here's how you work it into your script, and and you know here's how we here's how we uh, um, you know like. What's the difference between the mean and median DOM? Like those kind of things, like book the time with our team and uh, and we can get, we'll get, you know, get stuff rolling. Well, I mean, this has been a, a great conversation with lots of takeaways, lots of education. Uh, I'm definitely going to listen to one of your podcasts this weekend. If, is this the your main podcast right here? Yes. Yeah, and, and in the podcast we have the weeklies come in there, but then also the, um, uh, you know, the interviews. So this week we talked about the the actually the lawsuits um, with James and, and that's this one right here. That's this week's market data, but then the next one is the next one down. Is, oh yeah, I see it. Yep, the lawsuits. So so every Monday the 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 audio of the the market data shows up in in here as well. But this is also where we get the um, where I do the interviews uh, two or three times a month. Got it. So guys, look at this. This one's 52 minutes. I'm going to tee that up for the weekend because I want to hear more. And then look at these, you know, just quick down and dirty 15 minute updates. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you get a demo. Uh, you know, I truly believe that we've got some really good times ahead. Like, like being in housing is going to be amazing. Uh, when we get, you know, we know the worst is behind us and we get, to a more normal market. I mean, it's really going to be good times for data-driven mortgage advisors. Uh, Deborah, anything, you know, to make this actionable, a little spirit of Todd Bookspan, any taking action notes or last questions for Mike before we run out of time here? Well, I would say, you know, first make sure that you're using social media to consume from experts like Mike, like Trust Engine, like Mortgage Coach, and you should have strategic time set up in your calendar or your time block of just feeding your brain of good. Um, doesn't just have to be mortgage and real estate content, but that should be a great place for you to, it, the way that the algorithms work, guys, it'll actually feed you the content. The algorithms actually work for you if you teach it how to feed you information, but you've got to be a student of the trade. I do think just in the whole season of separation season, it, it's going to be the most knowledgeable but also the ones who can communicate that knowledge in a clear way that makes it easy for people to understand. So study your data, become hyper-local expert, and start having more conversations as we finish this year of just asking your agent partners, what do you need? What are your challenges? Like, are we, are we talking like we're a month away from having to Uber on the side or like, I think a lot of times we just assume that we know what they need when we don't ask them. And so become more curious and come with empathy and then try to solve the problems and find people like Mike and, you know, host your own show and have a podcast. And I can't remember who you interviewed, but you did, you interviewed someone about the migration patterns with like the economy and when you're moving job and it was just fascinating um, so guys, just be a student. If you have a little bit more time on your hands and then everything you learn, you can go serve more people when you work on how you deliver the message. So the only way to get better is to do, and then you become more confident and you sharpen that saw. And you know, if you guys need help, I ain't hard to find y'all know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, I, I use those interviews of the podcast interviews, just to, to, I just ask them questions that I want to know the answers to. Like, yeah. t tell me about it. Like, and, and uh, yeah. I love listening to that. And, and it's, it's really terrific. Like, I get so much value out of interviewing people. Um, even if nobody listened to those, I get, I get a ton of value out of yeah. them. It's really great. Yeah. It's just being yeah. passionately so curious, Mike, right, Dave? Abs absolutely. Mike, you are a gift to housing. Uh, thank you for making time to come in to our community here at Trust Engine Mortgage Coach. Uh, Deborah, you ain't hard to find. Thank you for showing up and playing her with your yes. uh, Deion Sanders sunglasses. And uh, guys, this this is a wrap, but just want to close with a reminder that spring home buying season 2024.
clear on, you know, that, that question I asked, like a realtor you work with, because uh, the realtors who are going to be killing it two years from now are not necessarily the realtors killing it today. So you make sure you're working with the right people and you're helping them justify the value they bring to the market. And if you're a mortgage professional and your value is your interest rates or your cost or how low cost you are, or how fast you could close a loan, there's a much bigger game to be played. You know, how to help families achieve financial freedom with home ownership and how to help families make better decisions that are data driven. So this is a wrap. Take care, everybody.